Sss- drunk. When you think of Porky Pig, do you think of spooky Halloween stuff? Porky Pig's Haunted Holiday on Super Nintendo seems like a weird idea on the surface, but there is some basis to this. For whatever reason, there existed a series of cartoons of Porky going on vacation and ending up at a haunted house or in a ghost town or something, so this game carries on that theme, with the premise here being that Porky has to work his way through a series of nightmares. It's a good idea for a game, and there's plenty of oddball stuff here to enjoy, although to this day it comes across as kind of strange to see Porky Pig, of all people, navigating haunted forests ghost towns, and places where it's literally raining cats and dogs. Well, maybe some of the horror vibes come from Porky's overt refusal to wear pants for once. This game was developed by Phoenix Interactive Entertainment in October of 1995, and it's the only Super Nintendo game where they're listed as the developer, so I don't have much else to compare this to other than other Looney Tunes games on Super Nintendo. And from that standpoint, this one fits right in. It may not be as fun as something like Looney Tunes B-Ball, and I personally think Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage is pretty good as well, but Porky's Haunted Holiday is an easy and inoffensive playthrough with a great visual presentation. It's a standard platformer, you get a health meter with six lives and Unlimited continues to get through six long levels with no saves or passwords. Your main attack is jumping on enemies, making this game more of the hop and bop variety, but there are power-ups that come in the form of bowls of fruit, and you can use the Y button to toss apples at enemies. What is he, Aladdin? Bear in mind you lose this power-up if you lose a life. Like I mentioned, the environments you go through are pretty interesting, and the artwork throughout is excellent. You're crawling through the fog on giant spider webs, you're underwater floating on bubbles set to some creepy music, you're even in the same dry gulch hotel where the cartoon Claws for Alarm takes place, and you'll see some of the same enemies here as you do in the cartoon, like the moose head that has a gun pointed out of its mouth. You also see the weird creepy leprechauns from the cartoon Wearing of the Grin, where Porky is cursed to wear the green shoes, which have a life of their own. There's tons of great callbacks here to lots of old cartoons I'd see at least a thousand times as a kid. The bosses are fun too. There's Tweety Bird who turns into Monster Tweety, you fight the abominable snowman, as well as Yosemite Sam who's apparently been getting into Barry Bonds' stash. I have no idea why he's so huge, but hey, it is Porky's own nightmare. There's a couple things unique about this one, for instance occasionally you'll run into what you'll think is a dead end, only for Daffy Duck to scream and cause you to jump about 75 feet into the air out of fear, and onto the next platform. This game also has randomized weather. That's right, each time you play through this one, the weather can be different in each level. It could be snowing or raining, or it could be totally fine. That's something that I wish was implemented in other games. Like, take an average platformer like Smart Ball, but then suddenly you have to deal with random snow, wind, and rain? That would be pretty cool. The only real negatives about this game are that it's really easy, and that it's too long. Porky's jump may not be the best, but the hit detection when jumping on enemies is super forgiving. I mean, it's fine that it's easy. If you're looking for a challenge, I don't know why you'd turn to a Looney Tunes game for that. But the fact that it's so easy and so long makes it kind of boring at times, especially the underwater level. Man, I swear, underwater levels are my Achilles heel. Hey, let's take the normal gameplay and slow it way down for a while. Ugh. That's eh, just my own personal pet peeve. But yeah, I would have loved this game as a kid because of the graphics that are a spot-on representation of the source material, and because of all the callbacks to old cartoons. Porky's default posture looking annoyed that he has to go through all this is always going to be funny to me. But I do wish they would have done more with the idea of going through Porky's nightmares, but still, I think this is a classic case of a game that you revisit once every few years. It's an easy playthrough with some great visuals, and overall it's not too bad. It's a good time. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.